Hello everybody, this is Papa Elf. Welcome to another video from eventelves.com.au. Today I'm going to show you something quick and easy that you can do for Inkscape. And essentially what we're going to create is a fancy cutout graphic like this, okay? So, my main inspiration for that was actually the Brisbane sign. So, you know, you've got an image inside, you know, the text. And I was wondering, oh, could is there a, uh, an easy way that we can do that using Inkscape? Turns out there is, okay? So I'll just show you a couple of websites. So pexels.com is my go-to if you wanted to download some good high quality, high resolution stock photos that are royalty free. So a good place to go. And of course, we talked about this last time, the Google fonts, okay? So I actually picked one of the fonts here and I'll show you um, which one it is, okay? That we'll use for our demonstration today. So I will show you a couple of demos, okay? I'll show you the easy one, right? The basics so that you understand what the principles of uh, behind what we're trying to do is. And then I'll show you a more complicated one with the end result being this graphic over here, okay? So let's start simple. So let's set up, um, I've opened up Inkscape here. Let's set up our canvas first. Now, when I'm setting up the canvas, I always try to set it up with the Instagram standard since we post a lot of pictures on Instagram. So my document size, okay? So I wanna set that to 1080 by 1080 pixels, okay? Pixels here. When you type, type that in, automatically changes. Now we can close that out, okay? We'll import in our a couple files here. So this is our logo in SVG, just for demonstration, okay? SVG is a vector graphic, as I've already discussed before and we'll import in our background image. So I've just picked this fireworks image here, okay? It covers our E logo, so what we can do is just go to object, lower to the bottom, okay? So this is the easy version, okay? And really, all you're doing is cropping the image or cropping the vector on top of the image, right? So I'm just gonna try to get a couple of the fireworks here, a couple of the um, these little, you know, sparks. So we'll select the E. I'm holding down the Shift key. Select the background image. We go to Object, Clip, and Set, and that's it. Okay? So it's clipped out the background image to the shape of my vector file. So you can do this for other vector shapes, you know, so if you have a silhouette of something or stencil or an outline, okay, you, you can get creative. Now, the other thing that you can do is actually do this for normal text that we would type in, okay? So I'll demonstrate that really quickly. So I'm just gonna undo, okay? We'll reuse the same background image, okay? I'll remove the E logo, we don't need that anymore. We'll type in a text, okay? So I'm creating a text here. I'm just typing in whatever random fire, something like that, okay? If you don't have it on the side pane here, you can go to the top here, view the text properties, okay? Now I've downloaded the, the Google font that I wanted, okay? So it's called Black Ops 1, okay? I'll apply that. Okay, to set the font and now we'll zoom in a bit. I can resize this, okay? So I'm holding down the control key when I'm resizing so that it preserves the aspect ratio of whatever you're resizing, okay? Let's just position that here somewhere. Yeah, put the sparks in the eye. And same thing, okay? Select your text. Select the background image, you go to object, clip, and set. And there we go. Okay, really, really simple. Now let's do something a little bit more complicated now that you understand the basics. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to recreate this uh, graphic over here, right? With um, some of the text actually, you know, 
showing the background and some of it not okay so how do we do that and then how do we create this uh, this window this diagonal window here I'll show you how to do that it's easier than you think okay so we'll import in our background image okay it's this mountain image that I downloaded we'll just set this uh, set this on the side for now now we'll create our text okay so peak all right we will change the font it was black ops there we go apply we're just zoom in a little bit now I'm holding down the control key so that when I resize this it doesn't um, it doesn't it preserves the aspect ratio okay so that it doesn't look wonky now we'll create that window so the window really is just a rectangle so just create any rectangle okay to start now this one has a white background so what I'll do is I'll just change it to whatever color for now so that we don't lose it okay all right so that that window is actually dimensions wise is just half of our canvas okay so I've switched it to pixels here I will change the width to 540 so half of 1080 right and the height is 1080 pixels okay now click on the uh, rectangle and when you click it again you change the handles here okay so I'll hold the control key and I'll use this upper handle here to just move it to the right okay and as you can see it you know makes it diagonal so I'm just gonna stay with the first okay the first stop that's it done we will align this okay align and distribute to the middle of our page okay relative to page middle middle we will just lower that so we can see peak Let's zoom in here a little bit now we want a little bit of the text to run through the box and outside of the box okay so maybe like that that should look good okay all right we'll align and distribute this to the middle as well okay our text so relative to the page middle middle done okay now we'll select both okay so select this select the box and we'll just copy this and I'll show you why this copy is important in a minute okay set this aside now we're ready to clip this onto our background image here okay and the way that we do that is we want to first make this into one object okay so we'll click on the text click on the box go to object group now it's one object all right let's position our background image here so it's behind it but I can't really see the mountain so what I'll do is I'll go to um, I'm gonna lower the opacity okay just so I can see it and I'm going to put it to the top I'm gonna raise it to the top okay so that I can see where that peak is okay so again holding down the control key when I'm resizing so it doesn't skew any of the graphics I might have to lower this a little bit more there we go all right I just want to get that mountain in the middle okay so look like that what do you think that looks pretty good okay so we'll switch the opacity back up to 100 okay we'll lower the object to the bottom just so we can see so select our object here our text and box holding down shift key the background image object clip and set bang there we go so that is the image but we're missing the the E and the A have disappeared so this is where this copy comes in okay so let's select both we're doing something slightly different here we'll go to path intersection that'll give us the remaining text okay we'll just switch this to white okay so matches with the snow go to align and distribute relative to the page to the middle and the middle and there you go it aligns perfectly now this you can export out but sometimes if you export this into PNG 
it may not show the background so it may show the background as black okay so the way that we want to the way that we can ensure that the background stays white is we'll just make another rectangle in the size of our canvas okay so here's my rectangle I'll change the width to 1080 by 1080 okay align and distribute relative to the page middle middle object lower that to the very bottom and there we go now it's ready for export so we'll file export PNG image okay the image size I want to export the whole page image size is 1080 by 10 oh sorry 1080 by 1080 okay export it to our demo I just call this peak 2 save okay export done let's check I hope that this was helpful and I hope to see you know um, plenty of improvements in your design i would be interested to see how you would use this technique in your graphic design anyway as always thank you for listening thank you for your time if you have any questions, you can definitely email me at papaelf at eventelves.com.au. I'll see you next time.